everyone and welcome back to the Never Chain Talk Show, a Life Without Limbs production. I'm your host, Nick Vujicic, and we're so glad that you've decided to join us. This year's Champions for the Broken Hearted campaign, where each month we're talking about a topic. This March, we're sharing encouragement for friends with disabilities. Last week, we had the privilege of speaking with Johnny Erickson Tata, and today we have the exciting opportunity to be connecting with one of my friends, Bethany Hamilton. Bethany taught me how to surf in 2010. She showed me how to put my arms out like this and find the balance, and we had exciting conversations together, and let me tell you, she personally inspired me and inspired millions of people all around the world. At the age of 13, she lost her arm in a shark attack, but that didn't stop her. A month later, she returned to to the water to swim, and two years later, get this, she won her first national title with one arm missing. Today, she is an internationally recognized professional surfer who has spoken around the world to encourage others to live a life of courage and faith. She is also the author of the book, Soul Surfer, that was adapted into a film, an incredible film, a favorite of my children, and it was done in 2011 called Soul Surfer. And she's the subject of a 2018 documentary called Unstoppable. Today, she joins us from Kauai, where she lives with her beautiful husband and beautiful family, three sons. Bethany truly is unstoppable, and it's such a joy to have her join us right here today. And I just want to say, Bethany, it's an absolute honor. Uh, Excited to do this together, uh, where we get to share your story here, part of the Champions for the Brokenhearted series. Bethany, welcome. Aloha, everyone. Hi, Nick. So good to be here with you. Oh, Bethany, I love you, miss you. Three sons, a hubby, and you are loving life, and it's all because of Jesus. We all know that. I just want to say thank you for being a champion for the brokenhearted, Bethany. We love you. Yeah, no, I'm super thankful for life and all that the Lord has blessed me with, and Yeah, I would say definitely the season right now with my children is so awesome and so much fun. And they're definitely my high of every day and usually finish the day talking to my hubby about how cute they were or how challenging they were, but (laughs) one or usually both. Um, And I'm just so grateful for life. Love it, Bethany. Uh, Look, we, we know that a ton of people already know your story. Um, but we're also obviously translating this in many, many languages and it's globally, hopefully going to be also introducing you to, to other people around the world, your story, your ministry and your heart for God. Uh, Bethany, I I'd love to, first of all, ask this question. How did you first come to know your faith in Jesus and your love in God? I, I want to know how could you tell anyone who may not even have a faith in God. How did you come to your faith in God? Yeah, so growing up, I grew up with uh, Christian parents, and there's a verse in the Bible I don't have it memorized, but it talks about having childlike faith. And I think so often we look at children and we're like, oh, they don't get it. They don't like understand like what faith is and I don't know, I totally tend to like disagree with that because I'm like, the Lord tells us to come to him like a child. And I think children have some of the greatest faith. And um, so I think as a young girl, I just, I believed, I trusted that God loved me and I knew that um, I was his daughter. And so thankfully, I mean, my mom was a super mom. She always read the Bible to me. And I always say to other moms that if there's one thing you can do for your children, it's just read the Bible to them and pray with them. And cause that's what my mom did. And maybe she wasn't like perfect and she didn't have it all together at all times. And But she had a heart to share the Lord with me. And 
So as I was growing up in my childhood, I remember praying with my mom around age 13. I was a very competitive surfer. I loved riding waves and being out there in the ocean. And I thrived in that environment. And But I also loved God. And I was just pretty exuberant for life. And my mom and I were praying that like surfing wouldn't be my idol or that it wouldn't be my number one focus in life and that I could honor God somehow with my life. And this is a very specific prayer. And it's pretty cool because less than two weeks later after we started kind of pray, praying this themed prayer, it was when I lost my arm. And my mom and I were like, wait, that wasn't what we had in mind, in mind, Lord. Like that wasn't part of the plan. That's not what we would have chosen necessarily. And, but with that being said, I, both my mom and I had a sense of peace that the Lord was in control of the situation. And he, you know, I survived the day after losing over 60% of my blood and just a long journey just to even get to the hospital. And I just trusted that the Lord had more for my life. And even though I didn't know, like my world felt upside down, I felt like my dreams to be one of the best female surfers in the world had been taken away. And I just like life felt chaotic. And then I remember waking up in the hospital and there's all the lights and noise and just sterility. And I look and I realize, wow, my arm is gone. And, but with that, I felt like so much more was gone. And even though it was chaotic, I still had this sense of peace and gratitude and thankfulness just to be alive and that the Lord spared my life. And even though I didn't know what my future was going to look like, I just chose to trust in the Lord and keep moving forward. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, some people, uh, Bethany, first of all, it, it, I always tell people that it's it's worse to absolutely um, have a limb and then lose it than be born without limbs. Uh, that change at such an age, um, what a crisis, what a chaos, what what a life changing moment. Um, that piece, though, that you're describing was real for you um, and you held on to God, just like you said, and you had a peace and you felt like he was still in control and you're glad that, you know, you're still here. That is huge. Bethany, did you feel like God spoke to you? You know, it's like when, when you did must have asked God, like why or what, or did he give you something to hold on to a, a verse um did you ever ask like god how could how could this be yeah i think like a few verses come to mind um john 16 33 i have said these things to you that in me you will have peace in the world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world or trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Or Psalm 56, 3, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. There's so much in God's word that speaks truth to our life. And I think when we're going through something hard, to hear his word is the most important thing because... I naturally did like immediately think, okay, Lord, you're in control. But hearing his word from friends and family definitely brought more peace to the situation. And um, I just think there's so many things that can come to mind when we're going through a hard time and our mind can spiral into weird thinking patterns. But when we have the Lord's word on our mind and heart, like, we're going to tend to trust in his word instead of like the thoughts that may come to our minds. And so I personally don't have like the best memory, but I'm working on trying to memorize more verses just to like protect my mind from the thoughts that the world may bring to my life or now as a mother 
Um, actually, my boys and I were talking about John 16, 33, um, the verse I first shared with you. In me, you will have peace. In this life, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And I was working on that with my boys because I want them to grow up knowing God's word and that they can let his word lead them instead of like the words of the world that can penetrate the mind and um, kind of steal from us and bring lies our way. And I think so often we can fall victim of the lies instead just looking to God's word to um lead and guide us is so important and that's what my mom taught me you know even though i may not have understood all the verses and all the bibles and maybe i zoned out a little bit while she was reading as a teenager but i still heard some of it and she still did her best and that set me up for that moment of craziness and chaos yeah. and it's pretty cool to fast forward to now and i get to do the same for my children <laughs> For sure. Now that's amazing. It's miraculous. Uh, Bethany, an interesting question. If you had 30 seconds with yourself back then, right after the accident, uh, and you could go back and tell uh, 13 year old Bethany something, what would it be? I would just simply say that the Lord is your stronghold and there's if there's one thing to trust in it's him and his word and that his grace is sufficient for you and i hope that you can rely on that in all that you're gonna face and just kind of keep it simple <laughs> yeah for sure uh look me being born without limbs um i i i know that the dynamic of a family when I was born without limbs. I'm the only one uh, in the family with this disability. Had the family dynamic change for you now looking back, maybe now that you're older with your siblings, you know, there are many people watching that have a disability or have a sibling with a disability um, where uh, one member of the family perhaps uh, has more of a spotlight and attention. Were there any tension or family dynamics that you'd want to share about that and any advice uh, for families affected with disabilities on that note? Oh, I would just encourage anyone listening to get really good at communicating um, so that you can express your needs and just be more open. Um, my family was super understanding and they actually were really great at just adapting to my situation and my differences. And they didn't really like baby me much and not that I didn't ask for help sometimes and that they did help me at times, but they gave me like kind of the appropriate space, I think, to figure things out on my own. And so that was really special. And I would just encourage anyone who has maybe some differences to know that you can adapt and you can make the most of your situation. And you don't have to be a victim of your differences and you can still live a fulfilled life, especially when you know the Lord and have him a part of your journey. Um, you're going to be able to overcome so much more and live in peace and joy and um, contentedness and that you don't have to believe the lies about your situation and that you can just overcome even more than you believe you can. I mean, I think because of my mindset, I really like chose to make the most of what I had and I chose to push through hard things. I think especially being a surfer, you paddle out in the ocean and the ocean is not going to be easier on me than it is on my best friend. And so I was immediately in this like even game field or playing field where the ocean would just sometimes just feel like it was sending me back to the beach. And I had to really like reach deep inside and push through that physical pain and to get back out to the outside of the waves and go catch another good ride. So I learned a lot being out there in the ocean that 
just perseverance and pushing through physically and mentally and also believing in myself and trusting that I can overcome the hard things that come my way. So I think I had this really cool meld of not only my faith in God, but this like physical challenge. And I think it's really good for all of us to have different challenges that we have to like work through physically, whether it's like, I'm gonna go swim 20 laps in the pool and I'm not gonna stop until I get that done <laughs> or something like that, you know, like kind of creating your own challenges. But I know everyone's in different places, but I just love doing healthy things that also challenge me. And I feel how they translate into the day-to-day -day life. And so I just think like being in tune with your mind and where it's going and how you perceive yourself, perceive yourself as someone who can adapt, perceive yourself as someone who can overcome perceive yourself as someone who is loved and cherished by God, and then you can live in those things and you can move forward with that mindset. Love it, love it. Bethany, as you started uh, allowing God to use your story uh, that did go global, uh, that media attention, um, that was, uh, for those of us who have read your book and, and uh, uh, understand uh, a little bit more about you than, than, than the first time. That attention, talking about mindset and challenges, but from the other perspective of, wow, I am uh, uh, being used by God to share the story of what has happened to help other people, which is incredible. But how do you keep humble, Bethany? How does God keep you grounded with that pressure from not just surviving um, or enduring uh, the, the difficulties in your mindset, but the other kind of pressure where, oh, wow, uh, this is big. This is bigger than, than, than I thought or ever had imagined. How did you straddle that and overcome that pressure and handle that? Yeah, no, it was really hard. I think that was harder for me than like the actual physical change that I was facing. Like I really didn't like attention. I didn't like being in the spotlight. But I also look at my 13 year old self. And one of the first things I said when I was still in the hospital was maybe God will be able to use my story to encourage others. And so I think I had this heart for others ever since I was younger. And um with that, I think I had a willingness to like bear the challenge and bear the the burden, so to say, even though it's a beautiful one and like so much good has come from being willing to share my story and being a reminder to others who are going through dark times that they can get through it and that they can overcome and that they have a God that loves them. And so, yeah, it was like a little bit of a like rocky journey. I wouldn't, bipolar is not the right word, but it was like a love dislike um, relationship. Like on one hand, I really wanted to help others, but then on the other hand, I wanted to go hide out in the ocean and be away from any kind of camera or any viewer or writing a book or something like that. I think like I had a, our pastor friend helped me write my first book, Soul Surfer, and I my intention span was so short as a teenager that he would get maybe like 10 to 15 minutes out of me and then I would like disappear. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a lot of help but and we got some cool things put out there, but like it was a tough journey. And then now in my adult life, I think I'm better at just balancing out the all the opportunities. And I feel like you could depending on your like personality and your your ability to handle all of it like i can only do so much so i try not to overdo it and i know when i'm overdoing it because i'll get short with my family or just feel tired and so i try to like pay attention to my signs and just slow down if i feel like i'm doing too much and getting kind of burnout and um so i'm very like protective of how much I'm giving because my first place of giving is with my husband and my children. And that needs to be like my daily priority. <laughs> and so, and then I'll try to find other things, other ways to give, um, 
when I have the extra energy and kind of just plan it out good. And I really, yeah, it's been really amazing to see all the good and beauty that's come from something that seems so awful and being able to share my story and encourage others. And I believe we can all share our stories. Maybe it's not in a book or a movie, but just being a mentor and sharing with the people around you. There's so many people that are hurting and going through pain. And I think our culture, at least in America, has lost this sense of like communicating our overcomings and our trials and our young people really need these open voices in their life to share what they've been through so that they can take what the the you know the old elders in their life have been through and find inspiration in that and you know i've never been one to idolize or celebrate people on a pedestal but more of just see them for who they are and what they've been through and how they've overcome and kind of cherry pick certain aspects of their life that have um are really remarkable and glean off that and it's pretty um but i think like yeah i think there's this need for close communication and mentorship and um just encouragement beyond what we're doing now. And I'm hoping to create more avenues in that realm. <laughs> in fact, that's kind of where I want to go with the next question. This is awesome. Look, you've, you, you, you've won uh, national championships and uh, you uh, faced uh, some of the toughest competition in the world, all while still getting married, raising your family, and encouraging others with what you've learned. What are you up to now, and what's the next goal for your surfing career? Tell, tell us more about what's in the pipeline for you. Yeah, well, if anyone here um, doesn't know too much about my story, so now I just turned 32, and I'm a mother of three uh, beautiful little boys, and um, this year in 2022, I just did some of my biggest surf contests. So I'm still like surfing professionally. Um, yeah, so long story short, I went from like a young little teenager, lost my arm, thought I lost my dreams, but then I continued surfing and eventually went on to be professional. And it's been a really cool journey because I just have a really deep passion for riding waves and pushing myself out there. I'm very like athletic and competitively driven. And so I've been able to continue doing that, but also still share my story and encourage young people and now be a mom. And it's really a lot of joy. And um, thanks to my husband and to the Lord, we're able to do really special things. And so I kind of just, I'm in this season where I'm not sure exactly what I want to do, but I'm very passionate about healthy living. So just taking care of my health as a mom so that I can better serve my family. And then that also helps me to keep surfing and ripping it up and um, having fun out there. And my six year old likes surfing. So after I'm done with this call, I might take him down to the beach and get him some waves because he didn't surf the last few days and he might be getting a bit antsy. <laughs> And yeah, just kind of taking whatever the Lord brings our way, but trying to, I'm working towards creating mentorship programs. I'm curr currently doing one for mothers and daughters and these moms, um, the goal is to open their relationship and help equip the mothers to have better communication with their daughters, to inspire them to know and love the Lord to equip them to be healthy, to have good communication. And I think this is a worldwide podcast, but America is definitely infiltrated by social media on a really deep level. And a lot of like influences through kind of weird avenues. And so our young people are being attacked by a lot of weird things that are really bringing them down. And I hope to help bring light in a lot of these areas and equip the moms to be the number one voice in their daughter's life so that they can grow up and go to their mom first instead of some like random person that might not have their best interests at hand. And so that's been a really cool journey because I never thought of myself as like, 
I mean, like, I'm a mom, but I love talking to young people, like teenagers and young adults. And so it's been cool to bring in the moms and talk with both of them and kind of have this unique um, conversation. I love it. I love it. Bethany, uh, out of all the people uh, that you've met around the world who came up to you crying, hugging you, saying that your story uh, was a blessing to them. Is there one story um, of the thousands, I'm sure, tens of thousands that, I mean, you got to meet a lot of those people who really come up to you and you've changed their life. I mean, God used your story to change your life. Is there a story or a testimony that you want to share about that we can we can all be like, oh my goodness, that is awesome. Yay, God. <laughs> oh, man. Um... There's a lot and I have a not the best memory, so I kind of forget a lot of things, but some that stood out to me, and I think that's partially why I really love like teenager girls is they're just under so many weird pressures. And there's been a couple young girls who were in the hospital suffering from anorexia to the extreme. And it's so sad that they could get to that point. But then they heard of my story and it, somehow my story inspired them and their dire situation to overcome and find a healthy relationship with themselves and their body. And hopefully the Lord, more importantly, to know their worth and their value and beauty and that they have purpose in this life. And they've come full circle and overcome their hard things and you know, it's so weird to me because I'm like, I'm just a surfer. Like, I just, you know, decided to get back out there even with one arm. And like, how could that story translate to a situation like that? But it's just been so cool. And even, you know, when I was younger, I would get like letters from inmates and like, like, things across the board, children in um, the hospital dying of, of sicknesses and so many of these different things that I'm like, how does my story translate? But I think ultimately people are attracted to the Lord and his light in my life. And, um, you know, when I think back, you know, I started our conversation with sharing John 16, 33, in me, you will have peace in this life. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And that verse, what does that mean for us? It's, there's so much chaos and unrest in the world, and we're all craving this peace. And I believe that only God can bring us that peace. And it's because Jesus died on the cross and overcame all sin, death, and evil on our behalf. And so that's how we overcome, because he has overcome for us. And so when we face things in life that are really hard and painful and challenging we have this overwhelming peace and hope that well the lord already provided a way and he said that this life will be hard but one day we'll overcome it all and we he has already overcome it all and that is like our continual peace through the challenging times and so that's how I've gotten to where I am and I continually overcome the challenges that come my way, whether it be motherhood or facing, seeing the things going on in the world and knowing that, well, my hope is not in the world or myself, it's in God and I'm able to trust in him through it all. I love it. Praise God. Amen and amen. Uh, Bethany, I know that your youth minister, Sarah Hill, played a huge role uh, in your life. What's the importance of finding other people to support you as you face challenges from your disability and in your walk with Jesus Christ? Uh, it, it's such an important piece for me in this interview because we know that sometimes we don't even have strength to pray ourselves, right? There are times where we go through depression or times of loneliness. We don't even know how to pray or even have the strength to pray. Um, what importance and, and role do you think that we as people watching you uh, should really consider for ourselves when we are going through a, a deep valley 
and uh, the importance of walking with someone through that. Yeah, I think community is essential. And um, as a young woman, I had my youth group and my youth minister, Sarah Hill. And I also had a really great group of friends that I had chosen who also trusted in the Lord. And these things, all these people were people that were there for me in that dark hour. And so I think taking the time to find our community um, today, what it looks like for me is my family, my friends, my church group, people that have my best interests at hand. My church is amazing. Our pastor is a wonderful man who is always professing the gospel and the law every Sunday so that wherever we're at, whatever we need to hear, we hear it both. We hear the love of the Lord and we hear God's word. And so choosing our church wisely, um, I have friends who celebrate me, but they also celebrate marriage. They're cheering me on to have the best marriage I can, to trust in the Lord through motherhood and having strong, um, strong mothers that are cheering me on to, to overcome the challenges that come my way in these areas. I think is so key. And then just having community. Yeah, I know my mom's still praying for me. <laughs> um, my friends are praying for me and people that like love me and know me and know what I'm going through are that I can trust that will lift me up when things are hard. And yeah, even looking for, you know, pastoral kind of um, counseling and encouragement, I think is important too, because sometimes there's things that we just need someone else to come and speak on. And so over the years, I've sought after that sort of thing too. And yeah, life's always going to be throwing challenges our way and we have to do it with others. We're, we're meant to live in community. And so finding our community to not only be encouraged by, but also to be an encourager as well. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Bethany, there's someone watching you right now uh, from around the world who has a disability, who feels alone, who feels alienated, who feels um, like God's forgotten them. Encourage that person right now. Oh, I would say that if you feel like God's forgotten you, you're believing in a lie because the Lord is the one steady, loving, consistent thing in this life. Or not a thing is probably not the right word, but he's the one that forever has your best interests at hand. And so I would encourage you to seek his word, to speak truth over whatever thoughts you're struggling with and to know that he calls us to think on the good and beautiful things, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, just, pure, whatever is lovely, to think on the things that are commendable. And if there's any excellence or if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. And God calls us to think on his word and on the, the beautiful things that he has provided for us. And we don't have to believe in the lies and we don't have to be victimized by our situation either. We can make the most of what we've got and we can adapt and overcome our challenges um, that continually come and we can live in hope and peace. And so I would just encourage you to, to seek um, community, seek the Lord, tr seek his word over your thoughts and um, be willing to change your mind if you're in a dark place. You can let go of those thoughts and move forward in in beautiful communion with the Lord. Mm, mm. In fact, Lord Jesus, right now, we thank you for our viewers. We ask God that you would bless them and help them to know that you still have an incredible plan for them and give us strength one day at a time. Surround us with that community and give us, Lord, your promises and the word that we could hold on to, uh, the Bible of knowing that you're with us and we can overcome all challenges 
uh, as we trust in you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, Bethany, two real last questions, uh, a fun one and then a, a connecting one. Um, Bethany, who inspires you? I mean, you're, you're an incredible athlete. Um, the Olympics, right? The Winter Olympics, this quarter of 22 happening in China. Um, who is there anyone else who really inspires you? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I Honestly, like I would just say my mom. <laughs> my mom inspires me in a lot of ways, just the way she loves others and how serving she is. And she's someone that I live in close quarters with, so I'm around her a lot. And um, I just really appreciate her so much. And she's been such a light in my life. So super grateful to um, just glean off her and she's just always encouraging me to and pointing me towards God's word. And um, I'd say that's my number one person and my husband and um, just my friends and my community. I would say these are the people that have the greatest influence on my life and are my greatest encouragers. <laughs> I love it. Praise God. Say hello to your ma for me. Uh, uh, Bethany, how can our viewers learn more about your courses and what you're up to? H how do they best connect with you? Yeah, um, I guess the world of Google, you can just Google search Bethany Hamilton. You'll find my website there. And um, yeah, it's been such an honor to talk with you, Nick. I always love just hearing from you and seeing you and you're just such a light so thanks for having me today and keep up the amazing work to inspire the world and point them towards the lord bethany i appreciate you and we love you very very much and you keep on keeping on with anything that god has called you or convicted you to do uh, may God bless it continually in Jesus name and uh, sister I am so inspired by you and we love you we're cheering you on and uh, thank you so much for thank joining you. me today on uh, on this uh, episode for people with disabilities being a champion for the brokenhearted Bethany you're a champion for the brokenhearted we love you thank you Nick aloha everyone <laughs> love you thanks